have your Bibles if you'll turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter number two.
matter what you've come through in life, there's still a possibility that your eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, or hearts comprehended what God would do for them that love you and is called according to his purpose. Do I have a witness? God told her about that. He said, write this vision, and though the vision tarry, wait on it because it's going to come. It's going to come. You ought to go ahead and tell your neighbor it's on the way. It's on the way. The reason why it has to tarry because I've realized that God says, I got to get you ready for the blessing. I got to get those who connected to you ready for the blessing. Because how many know you can't have just anybody around in the circle when God gets ready to open up the windows of heaven? You can't just have anybody hanging out around you when you're trying to go somewhere. Because if they ain't trying to go somewhere, they're going to pull you down with them. And I have a witness in here. I don't need nobody around me that's all negative when I'm going through something negative. I need some people that's going to speak life and say, you got to keep on pressing. You got to, there's a blessing on the way. There's another witness in here. You know what? Time, amen. For a bunch of foolish just when you're headed somewhere. Because when you're headed somewhere, you gotta keep your eye on the prize. Do I have a witness in here? Let me talk to somebody that's sick for a moment. You don't have time to talk about talk with people that's reminding you what you're going through. You know what you're going through. I need somebody to tell me where I'm headed. Do I have a witness in here? Oh, let me talk to somebody that's struggling in your finances. I don't need nobody to tell me how bad things are. I see how things are. I need somebody to tell me what I do. Yeah, that is, that God is able. Do I have a witness in here to do exceedingly abundant? Above all, I ever can answer. He said that the vision, no, it tarry, is coming. You better know it's coming. And when you know it's coming, you got to get ready for your blessing. You got to go ahead and go ahead and prepare yourself like it's already here. Do I have any witnesses in here that say, I'm already passed. I'm going to start shouting even though I, my healing haven't came yet. I'm going to wait in the dance like I already got it. I'm going to Pastor, even though my bank account says negative zero, amen, I'm going to go ahead and shop like this is a million dollars. Even though my house is in foreclosure, right now I just believe that God take it. I got another mansion set up for me. Do I have a witness in here? God says I've got to be able to talk my way through it. Amen. The of the passage of scripture here has been derived from a moment in time where now the children of Israel have heard God say that I want to be your God and you are to be my people. This is the second generation of Israel because the first generation got swallowed up in the wilderness because they could not get their eye locked in on the vision. God had told them when he brought them out of Egypt that they were going to be his people and he was going to carry them through to their promised land. But the problem of it was that some of them, they heard it, but they couldn't believe and you know how it is. Some of us, we know that God is able to do the move. We know that God is able to heal. But the question is, will he do it for me? We know that God can provide. But what do we see? That's the question I have to ask you today. For in the prior chapter, chapter number one, God began to instruct Moses. He said that I'm about ready to give you the land now. You've walked long enough. And I'm ready to prepare your blessing for you. And Moses said, well, God, what do you that you want us to do. He said, I want you to send some spies into the land. I want you to send some people so that they can go ahead and see what I've prepared for you. And he has he sent Joshua and Caleb and some of the other folks. Uh, they said that they all saw the same vision but had two different perspectives. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this room today. How many know that all of us, we can see a blessing or we can see God doing something, but when we see it, we have two different perspectives. Uh, some of us see it and say, oh man, we get ready to take this land. We about to mess around and get caught up in some fire and some glory. And some uh, somebody else that don't know who they are may see the same thing and start saying, oh, I don't know if I can do this. This is too big for me. I don't understand how is this possible. This was what was happening in the text. It said that Joshua and Caleb said, oh yeah, this hours. Huh? Well, I see nothing but land of milk and honey. But there were some more spies when they saw it. They said, we saw the giants in the land, and they was all taller than us, and we were like grasshoppers. The question I gotta ask for you today, how do you see yourself based off of who you are and where you are today? Because if you see yourself as a, just a little grasshopper, and your situation seems like a giant, you're gonna fail before you even start, because you have fear that has to put up on your camp. But if you see yourself as a warrior, and you say, oh yeah, this is mine, no matter how big it is, you're going to say, I'm taking this one now. Devil, you should have took me out. 
They provide seed and land. Do I have a witness here? Yes. One view, two perspectives of Joshua. Moses told them, don't you know if the Lord brought us out before, he's going to do it again? Don't you know, baby, if you were going through right now, God said, if I brought you out one hole, you better know I'm going to bring you out this hole. Don't you know if you are struggling right now, if you don't think about struggling, we've, we've already been there, we've already been there, done that. If you're broke today, you will not be upset and tore up, say, I've done that before. I'm ready to go home now to see what the year is going to be. See, the reason why God allows us to go through is because when we go through, we conquer what the devil meant for evil. But it's not just to walk around just to clap your hand, but it empowers us to let us know that there's so much greatness in us that we, may, we don't even realize how great we are. Look at you sitting here today. Some of you have been going through so much for this whole year that you don't even realize how much God has done. He's kept food on your table. He kept strength in your body. He kept a roof over your head. Didn't have a pity of Sets us up now because we have to know that we're already blessed. Yes, sir. You have to know, even though you may have not received what you want yet, that you're already blessed. Because if you're blessed, you need to be thankful, first of all, not for what you want, but be thankful what God let pass over you. I wish I had a witness in here. Is there anybody that can just stop for a moment and just thank the Lord for what He has already let pass over you? You just started thinking about what God has let pass. Oh, the things that almost happened. What about the things that almost happened? The car wreck that almost happened. The, the tragedy with your child that almost happened. The, the, the crunch in the sickness that almost happened. The doctor report that came back negative that almost happened. Can you think about the stuff that passed over you? Because when you start praising God for what has already passed over you, you realize that God didn't do nothing else. You're all do I have any witnesses in here? Can you touch your neighbor and say I'm blessed and you don't even know who you sit beside? Because when I look at the things over my life and how God has brought me out of it, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Fellow, yes. 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 children, they began to move. They began to move and now the Lord began to speak. He told him to circle the mountain. Mm -hmm. Now when God began to speak to them, God was showing them that now you have to learn how to listen to me. You see, my brothers and sisters, in order for you to make purpose happen in your life, you got to be able to know God's voice. Hallelujah. You got to be able to be able to shift when God shifts. And the thing that I've learned here is that God sometimes we we think that God sends us into situations to change the people. But watch this: sometimes God sends us the people to change us. Woo! I wish I had a witness here. Sometimes we think we're supposed to change the situation, but sometimes the situation will change my mind. Do I have any witnesses in here? Sometimes we think that we have all the answers, but sometimes God said, I need you to know that I have all the answers in the palm of my hand. Do I have a witness here? So now God begins to move the children, and now the children now are journeying around the wilderness. Now, the benefit number one is that when God begins to talk us through it, we begin to start learning the difference between wandering and making circles. Yes. Wow. When you wander, it means that you're going places and you're doing whatever, but you're not learning anything. Wow. When you're wandering, it means that you're moving, but don't have a clue what God is up to. Wandering, but when you're making circles, you're like the children of Israel when they walked around Jericho. They made circles around Jericho, and God gave them specific instructions not to say a word till you go around seven times. And then He said, after the seventh time, I don't need you to do nothing but shout. See, this is what that's making circles. Sometimes you might be going through some things that you've been through. 
before, but God is wanting you to circle it so that you will realize that this time the shackles are breaking. This time my mind is being humble. This time I'm reviving my life. This time I'm dropping some dead stuff and I'm picking up some people that's alive. I wish I had a witness in here. See, when you're circling stuff, God says I'm shedding off the dead stuff. I'm killing off the things that don't belong into your promised land so that when you get there, you ain't got to fight what you used to fight no more. You don't have to worry about how provision is coming. Now you're going to focus on what you're going to do with your provision. Is there anybody in here that said, Pastor, I know what you're talking about. I've been going through this thing over and over again, but now I see the light. I realized that God was only letting me go through this circle because there were some folks that just wouldn't let go of me. There were some people that tried to hold Somebody say, talk me through it. Sometimes, talk me through it is literally saying that I need you to talk me through the frustration. I need you to talk me through the frustration of I'm trying to do it, but I'm not seeing anything happen. Sometimes, talk me through it is it's making me learn how to get over the tendency to quit before I arrive at my destination. Do I have any witnesses in here? Somebody say, talk me through it. Talk me through it sometimes means that I'm getting rid of secret envy when I see my brother and my sister getting nails and I'm wondering why I have the mind came in. Talk me through it. Sometimes it means that I'm unloading the pain and the worry of what's not lining up to what I think I need. When I say, Lord, talk me through it, I need God to meet me where I am and talk me to where I need to go. So now the text says, notice that when God begins to move, all of a sudden we begin to start seeing the Lord talk as he talked here in the text. But he had told him, John, to circle the mountain. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, you have to be able to hear God's voice for when he makes the shift. <laughs> See, the reason I learned this the hard way is because a lot of times I used to meddle where I didn't suppose to meddle. I used to meddle with God's business. I used to try to tell God, God, don't you know I'm going through this? And don't you know I'm going through that? Don't you know I need this? And oh, God said, quit meddling in my business. Don't you know I sit high and look low? Don't you know I'm the one that holds a thousand cattle in the palm of my hand? Don't you know I know every hair in your head? And you trying to tell me what you need? I know what you need. I know what you need before you know what you need. I know what I need you to have before you know what I need you to have. And what you think you need is too small. Where I'm trying to take you to. I wish I had a witness here. You gotta realize, stop meddling in other folks' business. Amen. Yes, but you know what I also learned? Yes, I also learned that when I'm saying God talk me through it, I'm learning that every relationship was not meant to be a permanent relationship. Oh, I wish I had a witness right there. If I was to look at how many times I got to meddling in relationships I wasn't supposed to meddle in and trying to keep stuff together wasn't what meant to keep the kid together and trying to pump people on and that was more concerned and they were trying and it drugged me down. And you know what God told me one day? He said, if you pull yourself down to their level, you'll never lead them out. If you hang around and you dwell with the stuff you're trying to lead out, they're not, you're not lead them out, they're going to pull you in. <laughs> Do I have any witnesses in? Have you ever tried to help some folk and before you left them, you were cussing more than they was cussing? Have you ever got connected to some folks you were trying to help and you were giving all the money away and you ended up more broke than they was? And you know, when they got their money, they smiled, but they gave you a dime. And you trying to make up the ears meet and all. God said, talk me through it. Then you walk around all bit out of shape with an attitude. <laughs> 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 I 
moving around this mountain long enough. The next thing to talk me through is there's a difference between knowing God's word and knowing God's voice. There's a difference between knowing God's word and knowing God's voice. What I've learned, Brother Tim, the problem is not we don't know the word of God. The problem is we can identify the voice of God. When we start looking at the voice of God, we don't know when to move and when to stand still. We, we don't know when to run and when to hide. We, we, we messed up because we, we go after the word, but we can't hear his voice. But the danger of that is, is that if we don't know his voice, if we don't hear his voice, everybody say that, I gotta hear his voice. If I don't know his voice, I'm gonna keep doing what he told me before, and when he shifts to the next level, I'm gonna miss it because I'm stuck where he told me last time. Let me help somebody out. Don't lose him here for a minute. When God used to do what he used to do, we think we're supposed to keep doing it that same way because he used to work for us, but how many know it don't work no more, you know? We can't do it the way we used to do it. He said, because that was for that time, and that was for that season, but this new season, there's gotta be a whole new way, and if you don't hear my voice, you're gonna miss it, and you're gonna keep circling when I tell you it's time to move forward. I wish I had a witness here. Look what he said. He told him to walk around, but he said, now you walked it long enough, it's time to move forward. Do I have any witnesses in here? Listen, I've learned something in retrospect. It is this more than ever that, that if you have to learn what's not God before you can learn what is God. It'll make you start believing in things that you never thought you could believe in before. 
purpose will drive you, but the thing that you need to understand when God says move, you have to move. You can't be fearful. You can't be scared. You can't doubt. You can't say, what do I suppose? You just got to know when God says it, you got to do it. When God says move, there's only a window that's opening up because he says, I open up a window of opportunity so that when you walk in, you're going to get your blessing. Listen, when he's here, he told them now, he said, now I'm about to take you around your family. I'm about to hook you up. See, Pastor, you kid folks that know you, they know everything about you, but don't you get caught up in that business. You ain't got time for that. I need you to keep it moving. Keep it moving. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Listen, I know you love them. I know you want the best for them, but you got to save that drama. You got to get out. You don't have time for no drama. You ain't got time for no side talk. You ain't got time for no foolishness. You got to tell them you got to get it together because I'm headed somewhere. When you're headed somewhere, that means that I ain't got time to get caught up in this stuff that ain't getting me nowhere. And I get no witnesses here and say, anybody tired of talking about stuff that don't make no difference? You can fuss about it. You can cuss about it. You can nag about it. But nothing's still changing. Listen, your life needs more than God than that. God says you're going to begin to go after what I told you you got to have. I told you I know the plans that I have for you. A plan for you to succeed and know when to prosper. A plan for no harm to come against you. So if there's harm around you, don't get caught up with that. For you to buy, to eat, and to drink. But that's only temporary. Because before, where I go gave you just enough, I'm ready to give you more than enough. Does that mean anybody that's ready for more than enough? I'm not talking about this from nine to five and just making my needs be met, but I'm talking about abundance that just begins to pour out to the point where I can bless you, I can bless you, I can bless everybody in the building. When you're struggling here, I got you. Keep on moving. I want to be a resource where when people are struggling, they don't get caught up with the struggle, but they keep their eye on the plane. I don't have any witnesses in here. I don't want to be a crunch. I don't want to be the one that act like I got to be the doctor. I just want to tell Listen, if that's the only thing you're worried about, keep it moving, because I got that. I take care of that. I want to see God high and lift it up. I want to see God begin to do stuff. But listen what he said in verse 7. I'm about to let you go. He said that for the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. I need to tell somebody that this is your year. This is your year that whatever you put your hands to, God says, I'm ready to bless it. This is your year, as Isaiah 43 said. He said that when you was in the flood, I was with you and kept it dry. When you was in the fire, I kept the fire off your back. Today, I'm about to do a new thing. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither entered into the hearts of man what God would do for you that love him and is called according to his purpose. Listen, I need somebody to say, God, I'm ready for you to move. Listen, when you begin to say that, God begins to do something. And it's said that God said, I know your struggle right now. I know the wilderness that you're in, but it's only a process so that you now know that when you come out of this, God has something greater in your life. Do I have any witnesses in here? Somebody say, Lord, talk me through it. Because when you say, Lord, talk me through it, you begin to let God do something. And God said, I even though you've been in for 40 years, you have lacked nothing. Come on and tell yourself right now. Look over your life. Everything that you used to worry about, are you still worrying about it? Everything that you didn't think was going to work out, look, God has made it better. You worry about your marriage falling apart, but you're still together. You worry about losing your home, but God kept giving you another home. You was worried about losing your mind, but you're still in your right mind. You was worried about being looked at differently, but God gave you a whole nother circle. Come on and stand to your feet.
getting older. I know some of you are saying, <laughs> but when I can say I'm getting older, the things that I used to get caught up in, yes. the careless errors that I used to make, yes. the stuff that I used to get frustrated over and give up in, yes. I'm realizing it doesn't have anything to do with where I'm trying to go. And that's what it means. I'm growing a statue of God and man. I'm learning how to love people where they are. Which means with no expectations. What I decide to do for you, I'm doing it because I love you. And there's nothing you can do that bad or good that'll make me change my position. I'm learning where there used to be temptation that comes in like a flood. I'm learning through every temptation God gives me a way to escape. I'm learning that not only should I just listen, but I should also be comfortable enough to speak up and say what thus saith the Lord. Yes. I've also learned that everybody's not going to like me. Right. But if I stand for the man of God, I'm going to have no choice but to respect me. And I've also learned to work that if they ever put their mouth on me, they better be careful. Because my father said, touch not my anointing and do my partners no more. Can I get a witness in here? Listen, God said, you ain't got to fight the battle for this battle's not yours. It's the Lord's come on. And if you trust them, you give it to them. You can keep on doing what God called you to do. I've learned, Kurt, that there's, there's two things that God expects from me. That's to love them with all my heart and to trust them with everything I have. And when doing that, he says, son, and I tell y'all this all the time, you do what you're supposed to do, and I'll do what I said I'll do. Did I get a witness in here? Come and say, Lord, talk me through it. As you move in your purpose now, listen, it's not going to be easy. I told Bible study Wednesday, as, as Joseph found out he had favor, he messed around and told his brothers his dream. And that was the worst mistake he could have made, because how many know people that's around you, they only around you just for a minute to find out what you're up to. If you're going through, they're watching you until they see how you're going to fail, how you're going to fall. If you're up doing something good, they around you to see what they can get out of it. But let you run out of money. Let you somebody start talking about you. Let you eat hard time. You'll see who your real friends are. But even though Josh and Joseph told the dream, they said we're gonna kill this dream. They didn't know, they didn't realize that God only used them to push him right into it. Listen, let me tell you, whatever you may be facing today, if you turn it around spiritually in your eyes, to know that this may be the very thing that will push you right into the hands of God. You'll begin to start thanking him and worshiping him. I thank you, hallelujah. You'll begin to worship him right there. Listen, if you can worship me at your worst place, I'll take you to the highest place with me. Can I get a witness here? David said it like this, even though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for God is with me. How did he come to that conclusion? He said, because in my darkest area, God began to shine. How many know that a shadow is only cast when there's something standing in between light and darkness? You are the thing that's standing there. God is saying, I'm shining on you, but let you know I'm with you. But you just got to give it in. I gotta give up those things my wife and I go through that we have no answer for. It. But we just say, Lord, we're gonna trust you. That whatever you do is gonna be for our good. Can we do that today? See, Lord, talk me through it. Because every eye is closed and every head is bowed.